let's start learning JavaScript. The first foundation we needed to learn is variables. Think of a variable as a box that you keep on a shelf. But it's not just any box. This box has a name on it. You can use that name to open the box later and see what's inside. You can put anything in this box. A number like 7, a word like pizza, or even a list of things. But why are variables important? Variables in JavaScript and other programming languages are important. They allowed us to store, change, and use data without difficulty. To understand variables more easily, let's look at why they were created in the first place. In the early days of programming, developers used low-level languages such as assembly. They had to work near the computer's memory. This meant giving precise instructions on where to store each piece of data. Like telling the computer, put this number in memory location 084. It was complicated, hard to read, and easy to mess up. High-level programming languages like JavaScript make variables easier to use. They let us choose simple names for storing and working with data. For example, in your code pen or VS code, let's write let. The let keyword you see is used to declare a variable in JavaScript. It creates a named storage space for data, like the box we mentioned earlier. This box is where you can store information and retrieve it later. Next, we name this variable first name. This is like labeling the box so we know exactly where to find our data. The name first name is clear and descriptive, telling us it holds someone's first name. Then we assign a value to the variable using the equal sign. In this case, we're saying the first name is John. The equal sign tells JavaScript, put this value inside the variable. So our variable labeled first name now contains the text John. If you look closely, we wrap the text John in double quotation marks and end the line with a semicolon. The quotation marks indicate that John is a string, a type of text data. The semicolon shows the end of the instruction. It acts like a period, signaling to JavaScript that we've finished this line. But here's the cool part. Variables in JavaScript don't just store text. They can hold numbers, true-false values, and more. That's why we have something called variable types, also known as data types. For instance, let's say you want to store a number like an age. Just like we did earlier, let's declare a variable using the let keyword. Next, let's name our variable age, since we want to store an age value. Then, we'll use the equals sign to assign a value, say 16, and end the line with a semicolon to tell JavaScript we're done with this instruction. Here, the variable's value is a number, and unlike a string, like John, we don't need to wrap it in the quotation marks. This helps JavaScript distinguish between text strings and numbers. For example, we're telling JavaScript this is the number 16, not the text 16. Another important variable type is called Boolean, which represents a simple true or false value. Booleans are like yes-no answers in programming. They help make decisions and track conditions. For example, they show if a user is logged in or if a task is complete. Let's see how to create a Boolean variable, just like we did with strings and numbers. For instance, Let's say you want to store whether someone has completed a task. We'll declare a variable using the let keyword, as we've done before. Now, let's name our variable is task complete, since we want to track if a task is done. Then, we'll use the equal sign to assign a value, say true, and end the line with a semicolon to tell JavaScript we're finished with this instruction. Here, the variable's value is a Boolean, which can only be true or false. Booleans are different from strings like John, which need quotes or numbers, like 16. They don't require any extra symbols. This tells JavaScript we're storing a yes-no value, like answering the question, is the task complete? It will answer yes, because we defined our Boolean as true. Let's now recap what we've learned with a simple exercise. Here, we have three variables with different data types. Can you guess what data type this is? If you guessed string, you're right. That's because we're using double quotation marks, which indicate that this variable holds a string value. Next, what about this one? If you guessed Boolean, you're correct. The Boolean type holds either true or false. And of course, the last one is a number, which doesn't use quotation marks. Speaking of numbers, JavaScript also uses operators to perform actions like addition, subtraction, and even comparisons. Arithmetic operators are like the tools JavaScript uses to do things with numbers, text, and even logic. You can think of operators as symbols or commands that tell JavaScript to do something. Just like how in math you use plus, minus, times, and divide signs to work with numbers, JavaScript has similar operators for that too. For example, 
Let's declare two variables named number one and number two, each with their own values, like three and five. You can use these variables to perform various operations. For instance, if we want to add the two numbers, we can simply use the plus operator. Next, we create another variable where we will store the result of the addition. Let's call this variable sum. Now we have a sum variable, but it doesn't have any value yet. To add number one and number two, we can use the plus operator. This will give us the result of three plus five, which is eight. We want to store this result in our sum variable. At this point, sum will now hold the value of eight because we added three and five together. Now, if we want to see what sum equals, we can print it out using console.log like this. Inside the console.log parentheses, let's put our sum variable. So if you go to CodePen, you'll see the console tab at the bottom left. And there you will see the number we added. Console log in JavaScript helps you see what's happening in your code. It's like a way to print out information to the console. Remember console log because this will be your buddy when it comes to dealing with errors or displaying messages. Speaking of best friends, let me introduce you to one you can actually rely on when you're learning all this. Introducing Kadi. You're already doing the work, writing JavaScript, building cool stuff. And that's seriously awesome. But if you ever hit a wall or just want to make learning more fun, Kadi's got your back. It's not your average learning platform. Kadi feels like the next big thing. There's real hype around it, and for good reason. What makes it special? Kadi focuses on journeys, interactive, hands-on learning paths that make you feel like you're actually progressing. You're solving challenges, building real projects, and learning by doing. The whole thing's gamified, too. You get points, streaks, and leaderboard spots that make every session feel like a win. And yeah, there's AI-powered help built in. So when you're stuck, you get smart, personalized guidance without feeling judged. They cover everything from Python and JavaScript to C++ and Java. Whether you're a beginner or looking to level up, there's something for you. Oh, and you can start free. But if you're serious about building a habit, going pro unlocks unlimited practice and exclusive features. Worth it. So if you want in on what everyone's talking about, Check out kadi.tech. Don't miss out. This is where the momentum is. Now, let's go back to the video. Of course, you can log any value. For example, let's log the variable number one. When you do this, you'll see the value of number one, which is one in the console. Now that we know how addition works, let's also explore subtraction and other basic operators. The logic stays the same. We just change the operator depending on what we want to do. Here, we have two numbers. To subtract one number from another, we use the minus sign dash. This simply means we are taking number two away from number one, which is 10 minus four equals six. Now to multiply two numbers, we use the asterisk symbol. If you look closely, our console log contains a string. In JavaScript, you can use console log to print multiple items by separating them with a comma. First item is often a label, like a short description. The second item shows the actual value you want to display. So when we check our console, we get a much more descriptive message instead of just a plain number. After that, to divide one number by another, we use the slash symbol. Our console will show the quotient, which is 2.5. These basic operators help us do simple math in JavaScript, just like you would with a calculator. You've already used addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. It's just like solving math problems in school. The only difference is, now you're doing it with code. But to make it easier for you, feel free to explore our cheat sheet designed for variables and arithmetic operators. It has everything in one place, plus some fun activities to help you practice. Up next, we're diving into a new topic called control flow. This is how we teach our code to make decisions, like if this is true, do this, otherwise do something else. It's how your programs become smart and interactive. In this topic, we'll explore why Booleans, true or false values, are just as important as text and numbers in JavaScript. Let's get ready.